exceptions. In 1966, um, we lost the pound and we converted into dollars, pounds and dollars. The pound was a weighted note uh, on silver, it was um, equivalent to one pound of silver. So it was a, a monetary system that uh, operated on actual weights of metal, um, shillings and um, pennies and and what have you, uh, florins, whatever it was. It was all based on an amount of silver and the pound note was a uh, representation of one pound of silver. So you could take the pound note in and redeem it for one pound of silver. In 1966, um, that changed from a dollar, from a pound to a, a promissory note system like the, the US Federal Reserve promissory note system. But something else changed in 1966 as well. And what happened was um, our schools removed grammar and Latin from the schools in 1966. So prior to that, we at school we learned grammar and Latin. And Latin were the roots of the English language, or many of the roots of the English language. So uh, and my father used to call Latin the math of English. And uh, when, in 1966, when the school um, got rid of Latin and, and grammar out of the curriculum, my father bitterly complained to the school and said that uh, the students will become illiterate. They won't know how to read if you take those things out of the, um, the curriculum. Well, I'm going to show you exactly what's happened. It's strange that this happened in 1966 too, when the uh, the pound went to the dollar and grammar and um, Latin were removed from the schools. <laughs> so it's funny that that is. But I'm going to uh, just show you just how stupid and dumbed down Australians have become in a grammatical deception or in a, in a grammatical sense. I'm going to write Commonwealth of Australia in three different formats. And you will be able to read the whole three of them, or you will assume you can read the three of them. But I'm just, after I've done this, I'll just explain the difference between the three of them, okay? First, let's write it in English. read that come off of Australia now let's write it in ancient Latin and this is going to be strange not many people are aware of this or aware that it that it's relevant today but ancient Latin is the official language of the Vatican that's that's strange too isn't it so I'll write that okay same words Commonwealth of Australia, written in an ancient Latin style text. And we have here, which is the two hyphens in between the three signs or the three words. Now I'm going to write something in dog Latin. And dog Latin is um, a corruption of the essence of the text. It's also known as um, the text or the Latin for the illiterate. So it's a, it's a language that's used by illiterate people that uh, can't read. They don't know what's going on. This is I'll read the, I'll write the same words. I'll write the same words.
English. Ancient Latin with the hyphens and dog Latin. Recognized languages, but the thing about the uh, the grammatical standing of these three types of written language is that they don't have any jurisdiction with each other on the one document. So if you've got a page of text and it contains English and contains Dog Latin, there is no correspondence between those two languages written on that paper and that's the reason why when the currency of our nation of our country was changed from a weighted silver which was a de jure or real money into a promissory note type of a money which is based on the United States Federal Reserve promissory notes which is really called a company scrip or uh, internal accounting notes that's all it is internal banking notes uh, after that happened in 1966, they removed the grammar and the Latin from the school in order that the people start to assume that this is English. Now, you know something's wrong with that. If you saw that written everywhere and you saw a hyphen in between the words, even if you didn't know your, um, your Latin and your grammar, you would instantly know, well, that doesn't look right. There's something wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It is another language. But when you read this here, Commonwealth of Australia, without the hyphens, you will assume that to be English. And that mistake that has deliberately been allowed for you to do is actually what destroys you from standing as a true Australian, a national law, being a part of the real Australia, into coming down here into being a foreign citizen of a private foreign bank. But all of the Australians that are in here, such as the Queensland Police, the government, all the government workers and all that, they believe that they are Australians. They believe that. But grammatically and the fact, as a fact stands, they are the account holders of the Foreign United States Securities and Exchange Commission, the Foreign United States Federal Reserve, because this is a registered company with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission written in dog Latin. And it, dog Latin, the, the way they make dog Latin is by using the grammatical rules of English and mixing it with the written hieroglyphic all uppercase text of ancient Latin. And by removing the hyphens, they use the grammatical rules of English instead of the grammatical rules of Latin, which are two very different types of rules, grammatical rules of each one of these texts, in order to make it look like um, normal English. That is the grammatical deception. I call it the Justinian deception because this whole system of deceiving people into going from the public, common English, going from common English public into the private contracts of Rome, the private contracts of, um, of Babylonian texts of fiction, of a lie, is done through the grammatical deception of making you believe that this text is English when it has no jurisdiction whatsoever. 
So if you get your driver license or your passport and you assume that your name, where it says your name, and your name is written in an all uppercase dog Latin text that is really a hieroglyphic sign or um, uh, illustrative text, it's, it's um, symbolic text which cannot be a name. Only a name can only exist in proper English as a capitalized with, with the with the uh, first letters of the each word capitalized that um, forms a true name. Now, now that you understand that, if you go onto the website under the Governor General. And you will start to see just how confusing things start to happen. Even if you ring the, the Governor General, ring the office and ask him. They've written... Hyphen. Which is right. But what that is doing, when they write Governor General in the all uppercase text that is in ancient Latin, what they're saying is that this Governor General belongs to the Vatican. But then what they do got that written on the website which is, which is now in proper ancient Latin with the hyphen there which uh, renders the two signs governor and general coming together as two signs to um, in order to uh, to make one sentence in sign but then when they write it in English in the common English up here the, the, the correct language they write it like this the English <laughs> very clever very clever trick that these um, these usurping um, foreign corporations these co foreign corporate banks are doing to the people of Australia because what that does is destroys the English text because to create um, to make two words appear as one name as in governor general um, this would translate as this. Governor Grunel. Governor Grunel. Because that hyphen there joins this used to join in English is used to join a broken word back together or join two words to, together as one and that's how um, some words are made before the word is actually made into one word uh, um, the hyphen is used until eventually as time goes by the word becomes one but there, at this present time in the dictionary, there is no such word as Governor General, and there's also no such words or name as Governor General with, with a hyphen. It does not exist in the English language. So what they're saying is that this Governor General is the property of the Vatican. The Vatican owns the city of London, the City of London owns the, um, probably more than likely owns the US Federal Reserve. And um, the City of London is the, is the bar. And the bar are all the lawyers. So any lawyer that is in government, such as the Prime Ministers and, and uh, what have you, most of them are, 
uh, or the, the, and the very Prime Minister that signed us up to Unidroid. Um, in 1973 was Gough Whitlam, who was a lawyer, who uh, had sworn an oath to the bar, and the bar was um, uh, was the City of London, which is one square mile inside London that belongs to the Vatican. So what's happened is somehow or other, the Vatican has taken away the proper true government of Australia and replaced it with one of their um, corporations. But the only problem with the Vatican, even though it operates under um, proper recognised uh, ancient Latin signs, we have been given a fraud. This is a fraud. It's not real. Um, I'm not sure what it is all about, but I do notice that the Vatican seems to always be plundering the riches of the world. So maybe through this sort of a system. They also give us, um, on your driver licences, as I said before, your driver licences, um, your passports, etc. You also get your name written in all uppercase, dog Latin, without the hyphens. That's dog Latin. So the dog Latin is, is the, the language for the illiterate. It's Babylonian text. It's text that reads absolutely nothing. If you um, translate this Governor General without the hyphen into um, English, it simply translates back like this. Full stop. General. Full stop. Because Governor General, written in dog Latin, which is using the uh, ancient Latin text with the grammatical rules of English, renders this as Governor Full Stop General, which is not the Governor General. And that is the same with your name. Uh, written in that, like on your driver licences or on your passport, etc., uh, translates to, full stop, full stop, full stop. So the whole system is, um, is a lie. It's just an absolute lie because they are using a dog Latin text which is a debased text under under Latin under the um, legal dictionary, Black's Law Dictionary. Dog Latin is the Latin for the illiterate, for the stupid people that can't read. But in the English dictionary, the Webster's English dictionary, dog Latin is a debased te text, a, a debased language, and the word debased means in. Um, in the uh, Webster's Dictionary, criminal. It also means debauched. It also means immoral. So that means it is against God. You have to also remember that um, the people that are ruling this type of um, dog Latin world, this fake government, are people like the Fabians who believe in um, governments like Hitler and like Stalin, which is a which is maintains total control over the people. It puts the state ahead of the people, which is absolutely dangerous because we all know the history of Hitler and Stalin and other governments 
in the past, Pol Pot, that have used this type of system where the state becomes more powerful than the people. But the only way that the state in the past has come more powerful is guns. But this lot of governments, this new world order, are doing it through uh, deception, deceit, lies, trickery. And uh, once they've gotten hold of a Hitler-style or Stalin-style government in as a one complete world government, then who is there to stop them? They will have achieved their absolute goal, a total control over the population of the planet. And um, then the culling will start. I'll say it's for the better. But it only suits them. It suits them. It doesn't suit these. It suits uh, the Vatican. And it suits their corporations. And it also suits the one-stroke dollar. It's the biggest lie that's per perpetrated. It is the biggest grammatical deception perpetrated against the, um, the people of Australia, the people of the world. And that's how they did it, through the gram grammatical deceptions.